All right, so guys, tonight we're going to talk about league changes, format changes that people ask us about. How do you switch from one QB to super flex? How do you go from a start nine to a start 10? So we're going to cover all that in this show. Scott, what do you think, man? Moving from one QB to super flex, how do we do it? Ooh, it's a loaded question. Because I think the first answer would be, have you explored all other alternatives? Have you including thought about starting a new league, including starting a new league, including making sure everybody in the league is on board with it before you do it. And then you end up f folding the league anyway. And then you go, hey, we're just going to start a new league with the people that still wanted to do it. So if you really talked it through and you've decided you want to make the change, you have to put some parameters in place. I'm not going to be as like stringent on what they have to be as long as everybody agrees to it. I think what's not fair is when you have certain rosters that are distributed certain ways and then there's clearly something that favors them or hurts them one way or the other yep. if everyone's on board with it and there's something that everyone can kind of look at and say i can strategically plan for this i think there's a lot of ways you can do it uh the first thing is i think you do have to make it uh, a year out from now so you can't just decide in january hey next year we're going to super flex and you have two months to figure it out because at that point Everyone already knows. It's like everybody already knows what the market's going to be. So they're just going to act like the market is already existing. So there's going to be no such thing as, well, it's still 1QB. No, there's nothing to play for in 1QB at that point because the next time you're going to need something is going to be Superflex. So it might, you might as well just expand it right now and make it Superflex. So in a, in a league that we run, we decided that we're going to do 2025 is when we're going to expand the QB limit, which is gross in the first place. We're only allowed to have four. But we're gross. expanding that. But the issue is we can't do it until 2025 because a lot of people have traded away their 24 first. What do you think about that? Make sense? Yeah, I mean, so 2025 is too far away. But I, I get why you're doing it because you're not giving – not everyone has their first round draft picks. Obviously, some were traded based under the old format. So there's no way they could have known that it was going to be a super flex league. But if we're just going to be waiting until 2025 anyway – at that point, I would just go, hey, guys, you guys just want to redraft this today and, and just do a super flex league. I don't feel like waiting for three years. Two years is my limit. 2024 is more than enough yep. in cases where you haven't traded away all your 24 picks because you give everyone two draft classes and two free agency periods to uh, to make it right, to get their quarterback room in line. And just real quick, you should never have a, a limit on how many players you can have in a position. That's just juvenile and infantile. Organic response here, Shane. You ready? You ready? I'm listening. Why do you prefer Superflex to 1QB? Ah, it makes the quarterback more valuable. It adds more strategy to the game. Um, and just because it's Superflex doesn't mean I have to plug a quarterback in there, right? I could exactly. always build it in a way that goes, all right, well, I'm strong at 1QB and then the other position. And I've done this a bunch of times where I'm streaming a running back instead of a, uh, a quarterback. Now, it's not the optimal way I want to build it but it still lets me do more things. It makes that, it makes trading um, more prevalent, you know, because everyone wants a QB. They want a top 12 QB. And if I happen to have two of them, or if I have uh, rookie ones that I can sell, then I, I can make moves, not just me, everyone. So it's just a number of reasons, man, just a number of reasons, but specifically it makes the quarterback more valuable. Yeah. I think just to, to piggyback on what Shane said real quick, it creates demand at a second spot where it wouldn't have existed before. I think anytime you can create demand for more assets in a league, it makes the league better. Think about leagues where you have bonuses for consolations. You have, you know, side pots that people can win. You have weekly payouts, like anything where there is a demand for another type of asset. A lot of our old single QBs where there's demands for running backs, there's demands for wide receivers. That's it. And then draft picks, but that's it. There isn't really anything else. It's interesting, though, because you mentioned the, the quarterback landscape really dictates what that demand is. It's just does it yeah. exist in the first place? You can argue right now the quarterback landscape in one QB is it's not quite super flex, but it's pretty strong. Like you still want to get the positional you, advantage. You want Jalen Hurts. You, you just want as much. Allen. Absolutely. Just as much. So it is like the, the, the landscape dictates really what the demand is or how much the demand is but at least it exists now that you're kind of slimming the numbers down i actually would love to go to a system where we have two super flexes and yep. a qb spot yep. same thing that shane said as long as you make the quarterback scoring fair enough to where you don't get killed if you don't have three quarterbacks yeah. it does make it a little more valuable though i mean how many times this year have you guys had the back end qb twos 
uh, Brett Rippins during a spot start and stuff. They're worthless. They are absolutely worthless because you know what? The bad teams don't want to play those guys either. They would much rather just play something else. So maybe you put a little demand where you can use those guys a a little more so like the NFL does. The NFL starts a lot of quarterbacks every year. Why can't we start one? How do we move from a start nine to a start 10? It seems pretty simple. Walk us through the process. Like, does that even have to be unanimous decision still? Uh, For me, it does. So anytime you're making a fundamental change to the league, anytime you're making a a change in starters and super flex or one QB to super flex, that has to be unanimous to me because, well, it affects everyone in the league. And that's just not, it's not a minor thing. You know, it's it's a pretty big deal. So if one person says, no, I don't want it. Well, then you know what? The other 11, 13 people need to go find someone else and start another league with those parameters. Like that's not what this person bought in for. Right. So that's unfair to them. Um, I know we all evolve and that's why I've brought it up before in leagues that I'm in. I'm in leagues that started as one QB and we moved to super flex, but we had, it was unanimous. So it was like, all right, everybody was in, but if someone would have said no, I would have said, okay, I, you know, I've left um, and wished everyone farewell, but that's more fair than someone thinking they're buying into something, you know, in one form. And then two years later, us going, I don't like that anymore. We're just going to change this. It's kind of, we got got you. We got your problem. (laughs) Okay. So Scott, talk to me about moving from a start nine to a start 10. Well, first of all, I would ask anybody that's against it to tell me why. And if their logic, logic isn't sound, I would just override them and make the change anyway, because a lot of times it's okay. We're adding a starter. I look at my team. It stinks. Someone's better. They have better players on the bench, and it's only going to give them a bigger advantage to be able to start more players. Essentially, what they're saying, without probably knowing what they're saying, is I like more randomness and variance. That's why I'm able to win, because I probably don't understand how to build my team. But I like the fact that you have 15 good players, and you can only start nine. I have 10 good players and I can only start nine. I still have a chance to beat you because it's nine starters. When you make it 10 starters or 11 starters, now I'm behind the eight ball. Because if I have an injury or two injuries or five injuries, I have nothing to make up for it. So if you can explain that and say, hey, you know what? What Shane said, we need to have a vote to make this rule change. I get it. But a lot of times it's people just going, oh, you have a better team than me. If we add a starter, your team's going to be even better. Now that is true. But if you're truly thinking about what's best for the league, What did I talk about with the quarterbacks? It's the same thing. You're creating demand for more players when you add another spot. You're adding thing though. Is it so, you know, this isn't a communist society. So why do I need to think what's best for the league? When I, when I got into this league, I was told, and this is completely antithesis to what I do because I don't like start nine. But when I joined this league, I joined the, the, the auspice that it was a nine, nine starters. I built my team that way. I build my teams thin, you know what I mean? So guess what? I have like 12 functional players on my roster and I'm completely okay with that. You add one more player to that and suddenly my margins of winning really go down. No, yes, I I should be able to get one more good player. We're talking about one more player, but... Just saying, this isn't communist Russia, and that's not right. right. You're, 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 such, you're such a defeatist dynasty player tonight. Yeah, well, so he's you not. No, you have no, like, no, no I'm no, saying it's, not, it's the antithesis. It's the antithesis of you because you are a but, okay. So he's really player. not. Shane actually got a passable grade right there on the essay portion of the exam. <laughs> <laughs> but most people don't think that way. Most people are not able to explain why the hell they built their team the way that they did. They just look at it and go you know what? You have a better roster than me. I don't want another starter because it gives you an advantage. The same person that might have no clue how to build a team, but if they have a stack roster, they're going to go, yeah, I'd love to start more. Or I'd love to have a best ball format, right? Because they're going to do better. Yep. So there is an element of you're doing this for the masses of your league. It's for the best of the league. When you say I'm going from one QB to super flex, there's going to be four or five managers that go, I've been slaying this league in one QB. Why would I want to change it? Yeah. Then there's four or five other people that are going, okay, you know, I, I don't really have a reason to vote against it because I'm already behind the eight ball. So they may say, let's do it. You know, it might weaken the top teams a little bit because they only have one quarterback potentially. But if you make it so it doesn't have to be unanimous, say it's nine to four, that's 13 teams. So that's not the right number. Let's just say it's eight to four. There you go. That's four teams that are going to be disgruntled anyway, right? Say they come out the following year and they just stink and they're like, you know what? I didn't want to be in this anyway. I'm leaving. And then next thing you know, 
like four people leave, right? And then two more people are like, well, I was cutting leagues anyway, and everyone's leaving this league, so I might as well just leave too. So then a fifth person's like, all right, I'm out. Because we all know it happens every year, right? Like you have those leagues that you're waiting for people to start bailing on so you can just jump in, like not first, not second, but third or fourth. Like you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. the ball's rolling. Like I'm out too. Let's let's just end this league. And then then, then you're out of the league. But isn't that also the justification to say – you kind of want to nip that in the bud up front, or yeah. you just fold the league to begin with. If you're trying yeah. to, and I and I do this in my leagues that I commish, we typically operate under operate under like a seventy five percent majority rule. Yeah, and I look at it like you know what? If there's twelve teams and nine people are like, I'm all for it. Let's change it. Of course, I want to accommodate the other three. If we can right. add in an extra year and give them an extra year to adjust, yeah. then I'm okay doing that. If we can compromise on something to make 11 of 12 people happy i'm fine with that but for the best of the league if you have one or two people that are going no changes no changes no changes because then you get into this slippery slope where it's like okay we're gonna add a starter shane so we need to get a unanimous but unanimous vote but i want to make this little change to the bylaws and people go nope unanimous vote not changing it and then i go as the commission i go well this thing i'm just gonna change this thing we need the unanimous vote which is it Write better bylaws is what I would say to the commissioner. Uh, you need to be clear in that as someone that, that, that puts no effort into it. Do you know how many times I've found loopholes in bylaws and then the commission has to go back and say, that's what I meant to say. I mean, you're not, we're not attorneys. We're not going through and scrubbing everything perfect so that every scenario is covered. And, and I'm the worst. I even got on, you know, like Ryan McDowell during COVID going, dude, you're changing the rules during the freaking league. So I think another thing too, there's definitely a direct correlation when it comes to how young the league is, how inexperienced the players are, I think, with the lower starting amounts. So as a league, switch it to start 10 if you're at start nine. Just rip the bandit off. Just just keep going. A lot of these leagues that are like start eight, start nine are like people that just played Dynasty. So I think that is yeah. a good point. We'll let you so, make it. All right, so, so keep so keep listening to Dynasty Trades in Five. We'll, we'll help you along the way. We'll hold your hand when you're moving from start nine to start 10. So another question we get is how do you find good leagues, right? So let's say this: there's a league where they are hesitant to make a switch. You want to go find a new league. How do you find new leagues? discords you join our patreons and download our dynasty pandemic app well i was gonna say like doesn't everyone just have a podcast and or a youtube show and you can just start leagues i i mean that's what i do now i just i just start new listener leagues but i guess if you don't have a youtube show or you don't have a podcast which there's nothing stopping you from doing it let us know we'll support you (laughs) clearly Um, clearly there's nothing stopping (laughs) like if if we made it this far you can do it so back in the olden days before i had friends on this interwebs um i used to go on the dlf forums i used to go on the football guys forums um, looking for leagues right the first place i would look is the forums right or if you do know you know you follow a show like dynasty trades and five or dynasty and chill or dynasty trades hq see if they have listener leagues see if they have patrons because that's honestly most of the leagues i get in now are literally just through either our listener leagues obviously the ones yeah. we create or the ones that i'm on the patreon, of yeah. patreon. right yeah. like if i'm in a, i'm in scott's patreon i joined leagues um that i found through him it's serious players you know what i mean yeah. i don't mean to belittle people that aren't patrons but you know these people are serious they're yeah. paying a monthly fee to do nothing but talk about fantasy football <laughs> some more <laughs> listen to bonus podcasts and just live and breathe fantasy football and they still send out shitty offers even, yeah, yeah. even, even though we were all yeah, on the same page yeah there's a lot of places i mean you can go to twitter if you want to find leagues there are leagues that get advertised on twitter that are not bad uh there's also a group me chat a startup group chat that has almost 400 people there's constantly leagues being started in there from january to august oh uh, there's a ton now some of these are serial commissions that'll start 50 leagues in an off season yep the good news is sometimes those are pretty well run pretty straightforward cookie cutter to a, to a point to where there a lot of them are the same. Like it's just a new theme or whatever this week and they'll start a new league, but they are available. Uh, we have a lot of leagues, honestly, like I have links to hundreds and hundreds of leagues. Now it depends on what you want. 
Some people don't like the format. Some people don't want to get into a dispersal. Some people want to take an orphan. Some people want to do a startup. Some people want to do a sleeper league, but they don't want to do a snake draft. They want to do an auction. Like there's a lot of places. It's not hard to find good dynasty leagues. I'm shocked at some of the leagues that people are in and then they don't like them and they realize they're bad or they ask me, man, I can't find a good league. And I think Shane and I can attest and maybe we can help out a little bit too. Maybe we can be a little more active in the community chat or in the pandemic app. But like how many leagues do we turn down that are probably good leagues, Shane, but we don't join there, them. You know, dude, like we, there's going to be like b- between my app and your two Patreons, there's going to be, what do you think? 150 startups that are going to be born from, yeah, from those three, you know, well, it's, and- it's ridiculous. It's not just like I turn down a lot of leagues that people say, hey, we want to get another podcaster in or something like that. I mean, I I limit those to we're all looking for specific things like we're all looking for certain types of leagues, certain buy ins, all that kind of stuff. Like everyone's on a different plane. But there's a lot of times where someone random will ask me a league or ask me to join a league. And I'm like, that that's pretty cool. I'd like to do it. But it's another 12 teams start 10, 50 dollar league. And the scoring is kind of, you know, and it's I have 20 of those already. So I turn it down, but you know what? I bet you if I put it in the pandemic app or the community chat, there'd be three or four people that go, hell yeah, let me, let me get in. Especially cause there's maybe someone else they know that has a podcast or has a channel that they can play with. So like, there's a lot of opportunities. It's just a matter of seizing them. And there's so many people that reach out to me. Hey man, I'd love to get in a league with you. Hey man, if you know of any good leagues, let me know. And you know what? Yeah. I'm not good at writing those names down and going back to them. Because then I'm like, you know what? I know 10 people in the last two months have asked me about getting into a league. And then I see an opening and I forget who they are. So I need to be better at that. But yeah, reach out to us. If like you really want something specific, we can probably find it for you. And we're going to be giving up a bunch of our own teams in the uh, in the community chat. So I'm sorry. And we're going to be giving up giving out a bunch of our own teams. So if us. Nice. (laughs) It's your (laughs) first episode. So Shane. Why should everyone's next startup be a 12 team super flex start 11 tight end premium 1.75? Oh, baby. 75. Well, 1.75 because that's when you're starting to get into the actual tight end premium. Everything before that is just fluff. It's fluff and fluff and nutter. 1.5 isn't going to make Robert Tunyon useful. 1.75 might make him useful. Although I don't know why I said that evil despicable name right now because I need him not to do anything tonight. Anywho, also start 11. It's more creativity. There's more teams can go different ways. Start nine. Everyone's building the same way. G- generally, it's like, oh, I really need running you want backs. hammers. Yeah, like I really need two strong running backs. I really like to build my team through running backs, and everyone does that. And it's just like lemmings falling off the cliff. <laughs> In a start eleven, there's more creative creativity. Like if you miss out on running backs, you know, you go, all right, let me pivot. Can I, can I build this through tight ends? Can I build this through Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews? Um, all right, well, that's all of them. But can I build it through wide <laughs> receivers? You know what I mean? Can I just build it through high-end quarterbacks? Like, it just gives you more more room to play. Which and, and the more leagues you play in like that and the more creativity that you're forced to use, it actually makes you better in the start nines, the start For tens. Sure. You think about player value a lot differently. You start to understand player value a lot differently. Yeah. You understand that, you know, Cam Akers might be a trash can in a start nine. In a start 11, guess what? I, well, he's still a trash can. But he might not have been a trash can when we were going into the year. You know what I mean? So it helps you with player value. It helps you expand your mind, your thought process. And that's yeah. really the most important thing. And and anyone. like the, the Tyler Boyds of the world are, are relevant, very right. relevant in the start 11. You know, seconds are worth more, right? 